two years ago. John Higgins victorious on that occasion. And tonight, well, two snooker legends facing each other and it's for the 64th time. O'Sullivan with the slight advantage over the years. 32 wins compared with 28 victories for Higgins. So it's time to get the action underway now. In the commentary box, another snooker legend in the shape of Stephen Hendry alongside David Hendon. First, though, to introduce the players, our MC, Phil Seymour. Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Man Bet X champion of champions here at the Rico Arena in Coventry. <laughs> This is the final of group number four. It's the best of 11 frames, and it's time now to meet the players. Starting with a former champion of champions and four-time champion of the world, the wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins. Opponent, a two time champion of champions, a five time champion of the world, and the reigning UK champion, the Rockets, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Well, this is Snooker's version of El Clasico. Not only two all-time greats, but crucially, two players still very much at the top of the game. The world number three, Ronnie O'Sullivan, and the world number four, John Higgins, both winners of this champion, a champion's title. Thank you, the first frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. The only man who's got more titles than these two is sat next to me. Looking forward to this one, Stephen. Yeah, this is pretty much as good as it gets tonight. It's just probably a little bit unfortunate that this is at the start of the week and not at the end. More than worthy of a final of any event. If you go on play from this afternoon, you'd have to make Ronnie a slight favourite. What was unusual about John Higgins, although he had back-to-back -back centuries, the amount of unforced errors he made in that match was very unlike him. Can't afford them tonight, it goes without saying. What was interesting, I think, about O'Sullivan was he was really ultra-attacking, he was really aggressive. Some of the shots he played were a little all or nothing, but he had the two centuries in a row. The question of whether he'll play that all-out game against Higgins. It's a little bit the mutual appreciation society with these two. They both are very much respect and admire the other. <coughs> Slightly got away with that in terms of the red in the middle of the table. Very fast table, this Rasson table. Yeah, John Higgins actually commented on it in his post match interview how fast the react of the cloth was. Oh, now that is a, what you call a wide. That does not fill you with confidence as your first attempt at a pot in a match. players started very slowly in their matches this afternoon.
another interesting aspect of tonight's match will be who wins these safety battles because both players are outstanding in that department. Probably along with Mark Selby, the best in the business. to be a scrappy frame with the, where the black is. I think blue and pink are in the open. But the black is where these players want to be. I think that cue ball's just edged out far enough to leave a red to the far right corner. Looked at first that it was going to be safe. here, top spin into the bunch of reds. Try and free the pink spot. My, the cue ball's actually held the pink spot and, well, that red's come over very nicely. It's got a choice of two to the right corner. And maybe not so easy to manufacture the cue ball though, he's going to have to... Seven. Screw this cue ball through the reds almost. Eight. Yeah, settle for that. That's perfection. Higgins just looking to get going this season. He was saying in Crawley that took the world final defeat pretty badly to Mark Williams because, of course, it was two in a row, having lost to Selby last year and just didn't really have the enthusiasm. But he'd be bang up for this tonight. How could he not be playing Ronnie O'Sullivan 40. in this big tournament? He might just get him going if he can come through. 50. They first played professionally against each other 24 years ago. Well, the way the reds are situated 22. around the pink, you shouldn't see the, the cue ball travel very far at all. If John Higgins is to make a frame win and break here, just a series of little stuns, screws, little slow follow throughs. Certainly no cue power required in this break, just a nice touch. But you've got to concentrate on the pot. John Higgins, oh, 22. It's an incredible miss. Again, it's one of those unforced errors. Just no explanation for missing this. Very unusual. Six. Seven. Remember, Ronnie O'Sullivan has never not reached the final of this tournament. He's won it twice, he's been runner-up twice. Four. 
30. Fourteen. Twenty. Twenty one. That's pretty much a carbon copy of the pink that John Higgins missed. And 27. Watching it again, it's just incredible how, how players of this standard can miss 28. such easy pots. It seems incredible to think, but if you're not concentrating, you can miss anything. And John did say in his interview, if he misses the shots or plays the shots he played this afternoon, he would lose heavily tonight. So 34. I hope that's the last of those unforced errors. 35. Yeah, of course, it was 6 0 to O'Sullivan at this stage last year. His first attempt at a pot in this Fort. frame was well wide. But he was given another chance. Forty one. So after this red, I don't know if the red that's closest to the black spot goes to right corner. Forty seven. After this red, this is when things get a little bit more difficult. Forty. Doesn't want to be dead straight in this pink. Just off straight, me force the cue ball through and cannon the black here. That's what he played. Didn't quite get the black. The cannon's a black fool in the face. He's got a choice of two reds. 54. <laughs> 55. Well, he's going to need another red. So it's all about this next shot. Yeah, he can play a cannon on the black again. If he misses it, he's still going to be on the red that's closest to the cushion. And he's got too much in at the cue ball. 57. So 35 the difference, 43 on. So John Higgins still with some hope in this first frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 57. the green Ronnie would have been snookered on these two reds can get to the edge he's caught it thick it's okay this red does go to left corner but John's not even giving it a second glance so try and keep it tight try and force a better opportunity from his opponent
He may choose to play cushion first here. Yeah, he's coming to look at it because that way he can't leave the red that's to the left of the table on. He's going to catch this right. He's going to catch it thicker than half ball at least. Mm, that's a problem. Caught the red too thin. And that's cost him the first frame. Yeah, the really costly error for Higgins, of course, was that pinky missed when he was in, and he can't afford those tonight. Came completely out of nowhere. Yeah, he's done all the hard work. Got all the reds into a really good position. I say it was a, the simplest of breaks to try and win the first frame. And he just completely took his eye off the pot. Four. Eight. Ten. <laughs> Thirteen. Seventeen. Well, it's the latest chapter 22. of one of Snooker's great rivalries. 64th meeting between Ronnie O'Sullivan and John Higgins. It was a pink that Higgins 22. missed that turned the tide in the open frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan made 57 and he's got it again to play in first block. First to six to reach the semi-finals. Ronnie O'Sullivan leads John Higgins. 1-0 to the Rico Arena here in Coventry. Ronnie O'Sullivan 1, John Thank Higgins 0. second frame. John Higgins In the quarterfinals of the Champion of Champions. If ever there was an aptly named tournament for these two, this is it. Between them, they've won 63 world ranking titles, including nine world championships. First played each other actually as juniors. The first big meeting was in the World Masters Junior Tournament in Birmingham, 1991, where O'Sullivan was a big favourite. But Higgins beat him, and then in the final, he beat a young Welsh lad by the name of Mark Williams. One. Just left himself a little tester, blue to yellow pocket. Six. on the blue to be able to go right into the pink get these reds open as soon as possible seven we did that this afternoon quite a lot John Higgins over hit lots of positional shots
Again, you'd have to say unforced error if it's in the break. Rainbow. Eleven. <laughs> well, this looks as if it's finished. Sixteen. <coughs> First glance, absolutely. Perfect, just to nudge that red away from the black. It's a result there. Surely not. John Higgins, 16. Well, that's incredible. I mean, it's a fast table, but apparently not fast enough. It was the only way he could play that shot dead weight, because any harder, he wasn't going to be on the black. <laughs> Red, in off the red, to put the one over the pocket. Oh, what a shot, what a shot. One. Not only did he put the red, he actually had the foresight to put a little bit of side on to help it get position on the black. Look at the way it comes off the second cushion. Beautiful little shot. Eight. Nine. I think you always expect matches between these two to be close, but actually recent ones haven't been. Sullivan won 6-0 here last year. And then in some of the Home Nations events, Higgins has had some, some big wins. 5-0, 5-1, last two tournaments. 60. But the signs are not good for the Scotsman so far this evening. It's another chance there he had. I think when you've got two, two players who score as heavily as these two is on any one given night, obviously when someone's sat in their chair, there's nothing they can do about it. So if one of these guys hits form, heavy defeats can happen. <laughs> Solid shot with the rest. 24. So you go by body language, the way the players are going around the table, there's no doubt who looks the more positive, and that's Ronnie. John, even this afternoon, you know, just looks a little bit tentative, a little bit low in confidence. 31. Thirty-two. 
Oh, that's incredible. Five. He's hit the bunch in exactly the, the perfect place. To not be on anything. Watch this. Important here that he missed the pink and got into the reds right in the middle, and he did that. Very unlucky. This is quite an acute angle if he's taking this red on to the left middle. Mm, felt better of it. It in. He was unlucky not to be on something easier. Yeah, it was almost as if he knew the safety shot was the right shot, but he just wanted to keep potting. He felt so confident. 42. Didn't want to leave the table. 43. Only his third tournament of the whole season, but of the previous two, he won the first one in Shanghai, got to the semis for the second, the English Open. Fifty. Just checking the scores, a couple more reds needed. Fifty six. Fifty-seven. That was funny before that last red run. He actually shook his head because he was an inch out of positional play. Probably most people at home would be thinking he's perfect on that red. Sixty-two. Well, it was Higgins who left a red short to this pocket. Sixty-three. And he's been punished. Yeah, as I mentioned, that's the two or three times it's the, the unforced errors that are crossing John. 68. He was in first in both frames, but he's lost both 69. of them. 69. Well, he made two centuries this afternoon 76. to take his career tally to 959. 82. 84. You would think somewhere around crucible time, possibly, for the thousand. But well, he sort of seems set up for that, doesn't it? You know, a show-stopping thousandth century at the World Championship. 87. He made 74 last season. It just depends how many tournaments he plays in, I guess. But it would be just like him to do it there. 91. <laughs> this is going to be another one for the total. Really well worked, right? His third century of the day. John Higgins has got to cut out the unforced errors because a couple of cost him two times here. Oh, no, Colin Sullivan to the delight of this big crowd in Coventry is dished up with 109 and he takes early command of this quarter final. He leads John Higgins by two frames to nil. O'Sullivan here in Coventry, he leads John Higgins 2 0. Thank you, the third frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Sean Murphy waiting in the semi finals of the Champion of Champions.
John's come round to look at the situation around the black spot. And this is a test of queuing. Dead straight, stun run through for the black. Fabulous shot. <laughs> Fabulous yeah. queuing. thing is, getting in wasn't the problem first two frames. It was staying in. Just a couple of misses he was punished for. <coughs> but we know that John Higgins is made of tough stuff. One of the Eight. hardest players who's ever lived, still, at the age of 43. Nine. When he won the Masters the last time it was staged at Wembley Conference Centre, he dished up against O'Sullivan in the decider with a 64 break to win on the last black. That's what you call bottle. Sixteen. Seventeen. You have to say the Reds are in an ideal position for the big one. But that's maybe going a bit early. John will be more concerned with getting a frame on the board, getting back into this match. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Thirty-two. Well, they wanted the red to the left middle, but this is, shouldn't be a problem. Dead straight to the far left corner and stay on the black. 33. <laughs> 40. Well, I think that's the end of blacks. Off the reds, and up for the blue this time. Just be a little stun with the side cushion. Forty-one. If he's going to go into the pink here. It's imperative. He gets a full ball contact on the pink. If anything, I would err to the side, the left side, as we look up the table from the black. Why well, he's aiming down the cue ball, that tells me he's playing for the loose red first. And he's played it well. Lovely shot. 46. Forty-seven. So you would think this is a big shot in this frame. Pot the black, get a nice split in the reds. Give himself a great chance. <laughs> yeah, played it perfectly. That's the way to play those shots. You stun into the, the end red, the left hand side of the pack. Here you see, with a little bit of stun, the cue ball comes off the cushion. More often than not, you'll land perfectly on a red. So surely, this will be John Higgins' first frame on the board. Thanks. 55.
Seventy. Seventy-one. The crowd applauds because that's the point where Ronnie Sullivan now needs a snooker. John would love to carry on and make a century break. Seventy-eight. Seventy-nine. Well, they just focused really well. I mean, we haven't seen the mistakes of the previous two frames, which uh, really cost him dear. Eighty-five. Brings off the safe red. 86. Chance then for the total clearance. 91. Well, it's just gone wrong. 91. So, no century, but the main thing I think is, is he has won the frame. a frame with a big break. That'll make him feel a lot better. Ronnie O'Sullivan made all the running and punished the early errors from the Scotsman. But Higgins wins frame three, so he trails now 2-1. Ronnie O'Sullivan leads John Higgins 2-1. This is the last frame before the interval. Thank you, frame four. John Higgins to break. Higgins feeling a lot happier after that 91 to win the third. One thing O'Sullivan knows about Higgins, of course he can beat him, he can beat him heavily, but he won't intimidate him. He's going to have to earn the victory. John, maybe forced to take this red on down the cushion. He doesn't want to really. <laughs> yeah, I'd much rather be playing a safety shot there, forced to take it on. He was pretty close. Unfortunately for John, he's left Ronnie a couple of options. This first red at the bottom of the pack will open everything up. This could be a deciding shot in the frame right here. If this goes right, lands on the black. Wow. One. It was only the sight on the white that kept Ronnie with position on the black ball. Let's see when it hit the cushion, the right hand side brought it down the table.
Nein. Well, you kind of already feel the worst for Higgins here. Fourteen. Guess that he just has to focus here in his chair because things can happen. Anyone can miss, and got to be prepared if he is to come back here. Twenty-one. Well, I just struck that to perfection, really. The action that was on the cue ball was just a joy to watch. Thirty eight. You watch the cue ball here. Almost minimum effort. Almost like he was playing with a light white there. Forty-five. Forty-six. Fifty-one. Well, a shake of the head from O'Sullivan. Suddenly, this is slightly awkward. Stretching on this as well. It's going to have to get the extension on. Well, it's a completely different Ronnie O'Sullivan than that started his match against Stuart Bingham this afternoon. He didn't look really with it for the first frame and a half. At the moment, he's, he's prowling around the table. You can see in every shot he's given it. 100% thought and attention. If he's an inch out in position, he's disappointed. Fifty nine. Sullivan. He was going well, but 59. just ran out of position. And 
Yeah, listen, Herb, I think he's got such respect for Higgins. Not only, of course, does he want to beat him, but he wants to play well in doing so. 59 the break, plenty still on. Ma, this is so much tougher than it perhaps looks on the screen. Such an acute angle. Brilliant shot. Play that was slow drag. That was class. Well, he's one of the best has ever been at clearing up from Six. this sort of situation. I mentioned the, the decider in the Masters in the World Final last season against Mark Williams in that final session. He made all sorts of miraculous clearances to make the match a lot closer. Seven. And this is not a straightforward shot to play, the way those three reds are in a straight line. Well, it's not as played, but at least he's got a pot. Twelve. Twenty. A choice, two reds, both very tough. Watch how still John's head is when he plays the shot. Never moved. That's the secret to those shots. Take the cushion. What a steal this would be. Twenty-eight. Yeah. Twenty-nine. There's a chance. Oh, he's landed pretty straight in the blue. I was going to say if he could get close to this red and to the left of the pink spot, he might choose to play for the green. Because a half ball angle in the green would give him the choice of either to move in the red away from that right cushion or just dropping in behind it. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Well, he's played for the green. He's further away from it than he would have liked. But there is room to drop in. Put that cue ball on that right cushion. Leave the red to the opposite middle. Just landed short, but it's possibly still available to this left 38. corner pocket. Well, we'll know if it's in before John does. And it's there, right in the middle. What an effort this is. I just don't think there's anyone better in the current game at dishing up under pressure than John Higgins. Done it so many times on big occasions. 43. Yeah, Ronnie took on that double, didn't he, at the end of his break, thinking it was pretty much a shot to nothing. 
The opening red into the left middle was superb. And what a clearance this has been. Just this shot with extension. It never feels like your own cue when you put the extension on. 45. That's why he's just overhit it slightly. You just don't get the same feel. Forty-eight. Needs all four remaining colours. Fifty-two. Well, this set up, David, for a tremendous second session. Yeah, and if he does now win this frame, it seems likely he's got to be so happy with 2-2 two -two, because he was floundering a little early on. A couple of glaring errors let O'Sullivan in. 57. Pink and black still needed. 63. No, it doesn't get much better than this. It's another brilliant clearance from John Higgins. John Higgins. And this match is living up to the hype. Ronnie O'Sullivan made the early running, winning the first two frames. But Higgins has roared back with a great clearance there. So they go to the interval all square. Ronnie O'Sullivan and John Higgins level at two frames apiece. Talking about Alan McManus and Neil Foles. Um, listen, when you hype up a match between John Higgins uh, and Ronnie O'Sullivan, there's always a danger it doesn't live up to expectation. That's not the case tonight, is it? It's been pretty good, hasn't it? I think, uh, you know, Ronnie's got a 96% uh, success rate, so he, you'd think he'd be in front on that, but he's only level because John has cleared up, you see, and those clearances are the ones that really hurt, and uh, he's hurt you know, Ronnie before with those. That They're the killer frames. Ronnie going into that two-frame lead. You wonder if, if things are looking a bit ominous for John Higgins. He'll remember he got beat 6-0 in this tournament mm. last year. Higgins will go in the happier, will, will he not? Yeah, but the thing about it is, as I said before at the top tonight, a lesser man will fold in those kind of situations. Regardless of how well John's playing, when the challenge is thrown down, he can respond. We've seen it time and time and time again. He's done it in the last frame. Do you think that Higgins sometimes lifts his game when he plays against somebody like Ronnie O'Sullivan? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, and I think Alan's right. He made an odd, the odd mistake, but he can put it out of his mind, you know, because he knows what he's got to do to beat John, uh, to beat Ronnie, because he's done it before, you know. A couple of good frames from Ronnie, though, to kick this one off. Alan. Yeah, well, we've got some stuff right from the off. Stephen mentioned John's got to cut out the unforced errors. I was, I was also talking about his what I call economy of shot selection. He drifts that long red in. The only red he can leave is the way he's playing, the red he's playing. Now he has a good think about this pink. Where's the value? That's what John's always looking for. There's loose reds. I've got a perfect angle on the pink. OK, let's put the hammer down and try and put down an early marker. He goes in, gets a brilliant result. Pink goes up onto the blue spot. And a few shots later, how he misses this pink, I do not know. Yeah, that's right. And then Stephen also made a point that the safety between the two players could be the key. And in the end, yeah, Ronnie played a good shot. I know it's a little bit risky because he, there's a red that goes quite near to a pocket. John taps the table. He's in trouble. I mean, the yellow has come in a little bit to Ronnie's rescue, but it was still a very good shot. There's, there's John tapping the table. He tries to hit this from the back. Um, anything but a full ball contact means he's lost the frame. So R Ronnie won that with a very good safety shot at the end. Even though he's 35 in front, he could have lost it. And then, yeah, he, well, uh, he, I mean, this was this was unbelievably bad for John. I couldn't believe how badly he played that bad yeah, timing, wasn't it? A combination of a D cell, a, just a horrible shot, and and at this stage it was worrying signs because when when Ronnie plays that, that's quite a basic shot, but to get a good cue ball, 
straight away he plays this black. Now it looks pretty simple, but he's playing it with loads of tot, uh, kind of stun, and he's got the cue ball and a sixpence, and now he starts getting the pace of the table as well. None of these reds go. He plays for a half ball green, lands it on a button. He was actually very unlucky when he went into them. But yeah. what about this red as well? Brilliant shot. Well, we're going to see one that's even better than that into that middle pocket in a while. But, you know, he goes on to make another century, 109, and you yeah. think you start to really punish John. He punished him for that bad shot that John played in that frame. As you said, uh, that was a 109 mm. century, 97% pot success. He was looking very ominous indeed. John Higgins, though, let's talk about that fight back. The fight, it's what he does, you know. The, the, um, the, the, this was a brilliant shot. Stephen enjoyed this again in comms. And this sets up the black that's going to that's gonna follow. He lands just top side of the red, so he's got total control of the cue ball. Nice low black, and he goes in with pace here. There's intent in this, just this one shot. He also puts a red in the side cushion, a little bit of insurance, but he deservedly lands in a couple of reds, and then he can get, he earns himself the right to get himself going in the match, and he carried it on into frame four. Ronnie makes a mistake, but what a red, Neil. Well, this is unbelievably good red. I mean, it's such an acute angle in the middle bag. I know that he was 59 in front, um, Ronnie, and he played some great shots. But John's made a, a, a hurtful clearance here. This is this will have upset, you know, Ronnie. The fact that he really probably feels he should be three one or even four 0 up. Probably three one would have been a fair scoreline in his eyes. But he dished up, you know. And as I say, these are things that, that, that they they knock you sideways when someone knocks these in and, and wins the frame against you. Yeah, I, I uh, didn't want to say in here at the time we're watching it live. But the, as soon as John r knocked that first red in, I marked that frame in because he's. He'd done it against Mark Allen at the Crucible, I remember a famous one. He did it against Ronnie in the mm. Masters, we know in the decider, where he dropped a red in the opposite middle, dead weight, and, uh, and he, he made the clearance. He does it, um, he's famous for it. Matches can turn on moments like that. When we come back on the other side of the break, we'll have the conclusion of this one at stake, a place in Friday's semi final against Sean Murphy. It's all square. Who will take control? Well, the. Preliminaries have taken place. Thank you. Now it's the crash. Thank you, frame five. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. And I think the most salient number so far is that Ronnie O'Sullivan has a 96% pod success rate, as discussed in the mid-session interval, and yet he's got nothing to show for it. Yes, I agree. I suppose if he was in his corner, you might say, well, he's got two frames to show for it, but he hasn't got a lead, crucially, to show for it. You're absolutely right. And it seemed unlikely that he wouldn't lead just before the mid-session interval. It seemed he was going to be winning three of the first four. But these two have been around long enough to put what's gone before totally behind them. And we go again. Fifty two years of professional experience combined. And almost nineteen million pounds won between the two of them. nothing easy maybe there is a red to the middle which some of them look quite narrow angles but I don't think Ronnie's going to go for this one look now at finishing where he put his cue so the, the red to the middle might be on his radar but he'll have to take into consideration the fact that he might miss it this is a, a difficult shot
one. That's a better shot than it looked, actually. Key will coming off the bunch, out for the blue. Well, that was lucky. That was lucky as well. Because he'd gone off the side of the pack, which he didn't mean to. Six. Just occasionally, both players have just misjudged a positional shot out of character. Seven. I think this table's played beautifully, but it is a different table to what we use all year round. The odd shot must play marginally differently until they get fully used to it. Well, in the interview I did with John this afternoon, he actually described the table as being like glass. Now, for him to say that, 40. he's played in the very best of conditions all around the world. Just shows how quick it is, how slick it is. 15. 20. Twenty one, twenty eight. Twenty nine. don't know for sure that he'll go into the bunch with all the reds that are out and don't play. I think he's considering it. He knows he can get on a red. He might think it was worth playing off the side of the bunch and coming up the table for the loose ones as well. Dual purpose shot. Well, that's a good idea. And he's on one. That was pretty well calculated, actually. 36. 36. I'd say about these two, Phil, is that when they play other players, there's a little bit of fear, fear factor. Players playing Ronnie, they're a little bit in awe of him. The experienced opponent playing John, the same story. They know they're playing a snooker legend. And they play each other. There's no fear factor, a lot of respect, but they know that they can beat or lose to each other. It's all about what happens on the table, not in the mind. 43. So evenly matched. Always have been. 44. And you're right, it is a, a mutual admiration society. And rightly so. As I was saying before, it, it comes down to just the odd ball run, the odd nudge, the frame 49. like the fourth frame, which Ronnie should have won, really. Made 59 50. and got out of position, John cleared. Those little moments turn out to be the crucial ones. John now has got a bit of impetus. Interesting, that went through the side door. I always felt it would go in that blue. Just made it. 55. 56. The day in its totality has been something of a, a curate's egg for John Higgins. He made back-to-back -back centuries in taking that 2-1 lead over Ryan Day this afternoon. At 3-2 down, he looked very vulnerable. Scratched his way through frame six, made a, a nice nine, uh, 66 break in the decider. 61. Tonight. Off to a slow start, now in top gear again. 62. 
in that actually, Neil, not dissimilar to Sean Murphy yesterday. Murphy had great spells, 67. but also periods where he was ineffective. But there's nothing ineffective about this frame for John Higgins. That's 68. frame ball. Yes, it's about putting these sort of frames away in one visit. Seventy-six. Eighty-three. John Higgins, eighty-three, and the frame. Well, that was a shame. It looked like being a century, it wasn't. But for the first time this evening, John Higgins hits the front. Since these two turned professional in 1992, the vast majority of their meetings have been He's keenly contested. We've had the odd one-sided match. But generally speaking, They've always been pretty good contests. This one falls into that category. You know, Neil. All the frames they've played in those 26 years. O'Sullivan's won 352 as it stands. Higgins 334. Hardly anything to choose between them. Well, there is nothing to choose between them. Oh, the, the, this one, yeah. They've both won everything multiple times. And they're still right at the top of their game. After all these years, amazing. Getting some serious elevation, the extended spider there. Thanks. Pretty good. Five completed frames, and we're just going up to the one-hour mark in terms of total playing time. No attempt at a pop there. Just a containing safety. Straight away, Ronnie looking to be on the attack, looking at the red to the left of the bunch. If it goes in the middle pocket, but really, well, it doesn't go, so he's looking at something else. <coughs> and a very quick look at that red, dangerously close to being potable to the middle pocket, but again, it doesn't go. And you see the bunch in the way. Actually, quite a good shot from Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's left John with a bit of a headache. And he could drop into the bunch, which is negative, but at least he won't stick anything. Or get the cue ball somewhere in the left corner of the table, bottom left, so he doesn't leave that red near the left middle. Well, 
that's an error, big error. I don't know what he what he tried. I think he tried to pop the first red. If he'd have played the 100% safety, that wouldn't have happened. Maybe asked a bit too much of himself there. One. That's a good shot. The play on the blue. It's very well controlled. I mean, he wanted the blue back on its spot, and that's what he's achieved. Yes, you always want the, the high-value colours where they should be, especially with the pink being in an unusual segment of the table. This kind of shot would go unnoticed. Could be a nail-biter to this match, but... Well, he's already doing it. We've got a funny feeling this could go all the way. Now, that red could come in play then. Like Six. Under, his, under his arm. His bridge hand. Sort of shot he would play left-handed, but if he did play left-handed, I think he'd make a waistcoat foul. So now this is a rest shot. A little bit more difficult than he wants. Seven. If you want an indication of just how tough a school this is, O'Sullivan's 3-2 behind, Nine. and his pod success rate is 95%. Ten. Higgins at 93 is more than respectable. Thirty. We know that O'Sullivan's got 19. a great power game, but he's also got finesse. And that's what's required on a 20. table of this nature. Twenty seven. Twenty-eight. Oh, a chance to go into the bunch here. <laughs> a little bit of a slow walk round. <coughs> He'd love to get to the red over the pocket, but the other red's in the way. This. Does he play the plant as do he play the red on the left enough from the other one? I don't think he's going to play the plant. It's the first red I think he's playing. Yeah. He didn't need the other red. 34. That's actually quite a good shot. I don't think it was full pocket. Thirty-nine. I guess the, the complete snooker neutral is just loving these two playing each other. Wants Ronnie to make it 3 3. John was showing some signs he could just pull away in this match. But I think. I think John will be fully aware 47. that. This is a Ronnie O'Sullivan that's not playing badly himself. It's a very interesting match building up here.
Yes, and he seems totally invested in the, co the contest. He's 55. Concentrating well. 56. get a smattering of applause when this goes 63. in because it's the one for the frame 64 now it's just a question of how many seventy one of course Sir Sullivan is moving ever closer to that magic unprecedented one thousandth century break some people are saying it could happen this season. 79. Maybe it will happen next season. The only thing we can say for certain, it's going to happen at some point. 80. Eighty-seven. Eighty-eight. Ninety-three. Ninety-four. Oh, it made that look easy. It certainly wasn't. Yes, you want to see him get the century because, it, as you say, it just takes him one nearer to that magical thousand. 99. 101. John Higgins for Wally O'Sullivan confines that break to room 101. 3-3. Three, three. These two giants inseparable still. Frame seven. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Welcome back to the Rico Marina here in Coventry. It's the second evening of the 2018 Man Bet X Champion of Champions. And these two most certainly fit the bill when it comes to being a champion. 99. What a day it's been, by the way, a veritable century break fest. We've seen seven centuries today. Now, you should always compare like with like, so in snooker, one table invitational tournament. Let's talk about the Masters. The first four years of the Masters, 1975 to 1978. There wasn't one single century in any of those tournaments. Today, we've seen seven. has not gone to safety there's a gap between the brown of course the green and get through one well, these tables have been very responsive and shots like this you've really got to judge them perfectly otherwise we'll just race on and on and Ronnie has Landed it very nicely this time. It's a great shot to finish on the top red. Five. That opens up a number of options. Six.
13. That's excellent. Little flick from the first red. Twenty one. Finish on nothing there. Certainty to be on a couple of options. Now all of a sudden, you feel the match could be swinging again. John having won three frames in a row. Ronnie with a century and now in first here. And never going to be much between these two. 29. So if you can grasp the advantage back, you have to take it. 30. Over the years, certain matches between the game's leading exponents 37. sometimes haven't lived up to expectations. That's just the way it is. But this match most certainly is living up to expectations. The two old adversaries, the 38. two gladiators with so much silverware, butting heads and providing great entertainment. 45. Forty-six. It's a question of what goes here. There's reds that go to either middle pocket. She wants to finish low on the bunch from here. Yep, I think he's looking at the red to the left middle. She wants to land in behind it nicely. Fifty-three. And they'll go into the bunch and putting it as well. 54. Well, that's OK, but it's not... It's not inch perfect on the pink. Didn't quite work out as he, as he thought. Well, this is a big shot. No recovery blue. He's always been brilliant at that shot. He first turned professional, he's looking those in for fun. He's still got it. 59. 60. What a weapon that is to have in the armoury. As Neil said, it's always been there. And even now, you can rely on him. 67. Just dig in the blue. 68. Seventy-three. Seventy-four. Eighty-one. Two. Well, he had back to back centuries against Stuart Bingham. They could have another 89. brace here, along with the one from earlier. 90. A little nudge on the right hand red. 97. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
drop it in or anything. Oh, magic. This is absolute magic. This match is just getting better and 105. better. 106. You have to say that O'Sullivan is scoring as heavily at the moment as he's ever done in his career. There's no deterioration in his game whatsoever. His attitude is perhaps better than it was in his 20s and 30s. 112. These are the golden days for O'Sullivan. Not the golden years. 115. 119. One year after Jack Nicholas had taken Augusta National apart, Bobby Jones said to him, Mr. Nicholas, you play a game to which I am not accustomed. The same phrase applies here. Genius at well, work. And genius back in the lead. Back to back centuries. The rocket really is firing. Thank you, frame eight. John Higgins to break. It's on nights like these when you really do wish you could make up your own superlatives because we as commentators sometimes run out of them. When O'Sullivan's in full flow. And also a big shout out to John Higgins. Now Sullivan. Pod success rate 97%. He's only one frame ahead. Now look at that. 16 seconds a shot as well for O'Sullivan. That is rapido. Well, there is a red at the bottom of the bunch here that John's looking at. That would be a mighty shot to play at this point. I think he... Quite understandably, he's not standing for that one into the corner pocket, queuing through the bunch. Well, there's an, an interested spectator. Thoroughly enjoying himself. Luca Brussel. A Belgian who plays tomorrow. The last man in off the rankings. He was delighted when Mark Allen won the international championship. It booked his place here. Yeah, I mean, in a strange way, you know. I mean, obviously, he won the China Championship last year, which he had to win something to get in there on the off the rankings, if you like, because it gave him a lot of points, didn't it? And, uh, I'm sure he's pleased to be back. Beat Mark Selby last year. Here at the Rico. But he's probably watching these two masters because he wants to just see them play. Because he's a great player, up and coming player. But he probably knows he could also learn watching two of the greats of the game. That's another reason he's out there, I'd say. Not just soaking it up. is un unlike O'Sullivan, but occasionally you just cannot find a shot but it's just a container little wince from O'Sullivan I wonder if he's left a, a possible double in the right middle from the red on the left John's very good at them it just might be it's a glimmer of a chance He's gone for it, but he's missed it by a way. <laughs> John's very good at those, but that was quite a long way out for him.
Well, he played a shot like that, actually, on a red oh. to resemble the last flame, just before his century. Not only prodding the red, but just whipping the cue ball round off two cushions. Well, there's a real bounce in his stride at the moment. Eight. Nine. He's in the zone. On the back of two centuries. And in amongst them again. And this is a man who transcends snooker. He's one of 16. Britain's great sporting treasures. 17. It takes a lot to win, but he wins in extraordinary style. Twenty-five. And he loves this champion of champions. Before tonight, he'd played 17 matches in this tournament, winning 15 of them. 31. Always gets a little irritated when the referee has to take some time putting the pink in the correct place. And it won't go back on its own spot. 32. But Brendan Moore is one of the very best. And he wasn't slow, just going about his business. Just a sign that things could get a bit 39. tougher after this. Going into the bunch. Uh, 40. There's not a particularly wide target from the black upwards, as you can see. If that's a shot he chooses, you have to play this well. Yeah, well, he played it pretty well, I thought, but... You can always cling to a red, he's really angry, seven. actually. He's desperate to keep the break going, but he can't do it. Well, not a bad shot 47. to end. Still just ruining that last shot. I don't think he played it badly. Just didn't land on one. Very good white. Help, though, by the red making contact with the blue. might come back towards the black end. <coughs> Guiding the cue ball around the table was part of the shot, I agree, but he went for the pot.
both players would recognise, despite Ronnie being 47 nil up in this frame, that the frame it could still be won on either side. And if John won it, it would bring him right back into the match. Ronnie is still going to be very watchful here. He'd be happy for those three reds to stay there. All because he's in front. It's a real queuing shot. Slightly distracted by something in the audience. John can get to this red. It's not much fun though. It's a long way away from it. It could go into the red directly beyond it. Well, he chewed it supremely well and missed that red. In the penultimate frame this afternoon against Ryan Day. He knocked in a really good Yellow. red. Do or die to a ball pocket and cleared up, then won the decider. That one wasn't quite do or die, but it was pressurised. He just got the headache of how he's going to possibly three. win the frame here with those three reds all clogging up the bulk end of the table. Quite an unusual set of reds there. You wouldn't see him in that position. It just means that, well, I don't see how he can clear them here. Too many obstacles in his way. Four. He's looking at the target from the yellow one cushion to go into the reds. And if he does play it, I don't think he'll go into them really firmly. Just might want to just tickle into the reds here. Not quite as played. Six. Not getting very far, is he here? Two reds with yellows. Hardly hurting O'Sullivan, that. Still got one red to the middle. John Higgins, six. Well, that should be a frame winner. 
That was such a good shot, wasn't it? Didn't really want to be playing it. But he can win it with the Reds in open play quite comfortably. Set. Eight. There's, there's real silence in the audience. They're engrossed in this match. It's a lovely atmosphere. And if you're not enjoying this, then you're not really a snooker fan. It's 13. been a great occasion. Only O'Sullivan is getting the upper hand. Fourth. You would never say that he's over the line. Just starting to play really well. Could have had three centuries in a row. He didn't get into the bunch very well, but he soon after went on to 19. win the frame. 20. You're right, Neil. It has been a great occasion, and because of the inevitable passage of time, these kind of occasions aren't unlimited. Eventually, they will occur 25. no more. So while Higgins and O'Sullivan are still playing top-level snooker, just savour it. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 25, and the fray. Higgins concedes, and for the first time since 2-0, Ronnie O'Sullivan has a two-frame gap. This time it's 5-3. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. 2018 has been tremendous. A possible three frames left. John Higgins needs to win every single one of them. Now Sullivan on the verge of a semi-final meeting with the defending champion Sean Murphy. A bit scruffy, didn't it, that shot? Because he he thought that uh, he could get the red to the middle pocket, but he hit the one on the way through. And he just put his hand up there. He's not had the worst of results from that. It's quite a rare mistake, actually, from him. <clears throat> not, not anything like what he meant. He called it much too thick. Uh, really thick, actually. The red has gone further than the cue ball. shown all day. Knocked him 
in five centuries. Five centuries in a day, some of the lower rung players, and I'm Three. not being unkind here, just truthful, some of the lower rung players don't make five centuries Four. in a season. Well, name some names, Phil. Come on. <laughs> Me. <laughs> no, I was being cruel there. No, he's played brilliantly. And look, this game is about one thing. You've got to score when you're in. There's lots of other parts to it, but if you're not doing that bit, all the rest of it is it's not relevant. You can play all the best safety in the world, but if you don't punish when you get chances, no good to you. Ronnie is in the punishing mood. Nine. Ten. Well, of course, he'd love to, he's working around getting the black into play. That's what this is all revolving around. Phil is all leading up to that. 60. red is the one he's on he may have wanted to go a bit further than he's finished there I'll see how he works this shot I think the referee Brendan Moore finishes respotting this 22 see if he can possibly get the black and the red away from each other here well he played it the safe way and screwed up the table 23 it's not the worst outcome Within three shots, the black's on its spot. There's no reds anywhere near it. And that's why he's such a wonderful player. A wonderful break builder. And the next piece 36. of the jigsaw is to get the bunch open. And if he does it, the end will be nigh. There's a very good split. He played that so well. It's all about getting the key ball to zip into them. Yeah, 44. When you think about it, you know, O'Sullivan is the embodiment 46. of the title of this tournament. He is a champion of champions. That wasn't the best positional shot, but overall tonight he's played beautifully. Yes, he just finished in between 47. there, didn't he, on that red, but 
Let me feel he is literally one shot away from winning the match, and that is to get nicely on the next red. The point where nothing can stop him. And that could be the shot. 50. He's worked hard at this break. It's not been simple. Black was completely out of the game. And he's an artist when it comes to break building. Applause, but one more question to be answered. Indeed. Fifty-eight. Wow. Well, a little rueful smile. He didn't really want to be knocking this pink in because he's got. I think he got centre ball striking, but it's a more pressurised shot than he ever wanted. This is match ball. Nothing can stop him. This has been a great display from Mike Sullivan, you know. John Higgins put him under pressure, one three in a row. 64. And how well has he responded? Sixty-five. As he gets hold of 68. Ronnie O'Sullivan, the bar seems to get higher. 69. 75. 76. Can the great man make it a six-century day? And bear in mind, both of his opponents have been world 83. champions. 84. I think John can have no complaints. I don't think he's played all that badly. He's been on the wrong end of sheer weight of scoring. 87. 89. 92. That green was his 200th attempted pot this evening. He's knocked in 191 of them. 96. Well, the crowd have loved this. It's been a truly amazing battle. Deep into his 40s, he remains a giant of the game. He's into the semi-finals. He's beaten, doubled up on John Higgins by six frames to three. John Higgins winning by six frames to three. And I'm pleased to say that Ronnie has stepped in to join us. Uh, many congratulations, Ronnie. It is a delight to watch you when you're playing like that. Um, did you enjoy that? Yeah, I did. I enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, it's you know, when you play well and queuing well, you always enjoy it. But then to do it against someone like John, you know, it's even more special. Yeah. And he is such a, a, a tough competitor and somebody that you've played probably more than anybody else in your career. Does that change the way you, you go into this game? Do you, are you more focused, more excited? No, I think, about I think you have to prospect? be like, like standards higher, especially in this tournament. So every match you've got to be on it, you know. But John, you know, he's 
he's you know him and Stephen the two greatest players ever that I've ever played. So you know I, I bow to them too. Everybody else, then I um, they can stay below me if you know what I mean. Yeah, but, <laughs> You know, he really is like a different league, you know what I mean? So to do it against John is always a, a, a special achievement. And no matter how he's playing, you know, you can't write him off. And you got into that great lead, a couple of frames, mm. and it, it looked ominous yeah. for John. And I'm sure in his mind he was thinking back to last year when you, you beat him 6 0, but obviously he got back into the match. What were you thinking at that, that mid session interval? No, I just keep playing. You know, I've played John so many times, you know, that like sometimes you can just sit in your chair for five, six frames and not see a ball. So, you know, I, I, I kind of prepared myself for that. And I thought, well, if I do get a chance, then you know you're going to have to score, put him under some pressure, you know, because we're all human, and you know, you put a bit of pressure on anybody, you know, they they they've got more chance of missing. So that's all I kept thinking, really. The first match today, obviously, the first frame against Bing, you yeah. looked a bit scrappy. You must have blew in the middle going to the pack by yeah. about that far. <laughs> oh, and then they, to end the day like this, you made yeah. six centuries. Yeah. When you play, what did you just like decide to I be more I aggressive? I decided, yeah, I decided that um, you know, because I've only played like two tournaments. You know, all the other guys have played ten, so I feel like I was a little bit like nervy coming in it, thinking you know, I might be off the pace. And then I started a bit negative, and I thought, uh, and I felt it. You know, I felt like he was more the aggressor. So I thought, I oh, saw it. Just start going for a few mm. shots, changed something in my technique, which kind of got me hitting the ball a little bit better. And you know, I started to flow a bit. The, the, the table's playing well. Play, maybe a, a touch easy, make you go for more yeah, pots. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like any table's tough if um, if you're queuing round corners, you know. But if you're queuing all right, it's an mm. easy table to score. And you know, soft cushions. They're a little bit generous, you know. I, I think they should make the tables a little bit harder. It's, it's a bit like, you know, you put in like Tiger Woods on a golf course, and it's like fairways are like 200 foot wide, they're flat greens, no wind. Yeah, it's a bit, that's a bit like, it's a bit like playing snooker. Now I think they should like make the cloths a bit heavier, you know, maybe tighten the pockets up a little bit, and then you'll see like a bit more creativity, you know, because you got, you know, it's it's so easy sometimes once you get the balls open, anyone can clear up these days, you know. You look like you enjoy playing, John, and, and even when he was cleaning up. You know, to go to to all of that. Yeah. it's going to hurt you, but in some ways you you appreciate it, don't you? I love it, snooker. I love snooker. You know like, I've watched is. a lot of snooker now. You know, doing the punditry, and you know, I'm sitting there and I thought, well, I've got the best chair in the house. You know, you're watching John play up close. He's he's a different class. You know, he really is. You know, he's yes, just yeah. he's just beautiful to watch. Like watching a master at work. You know, so um, you know, but you've got to try and put it out of your head as well. But it does inspire you to think. Well, I've got a really you know, find some f top form to win. You love it here in uh, Coventry. You've always had success to you. Shang up the you've... road, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and you've never failed to reach the final. What is it about this tournament, do you think? Uh, I don't know. I just think it's just a nice... You know, you've just got a few players here. You know, it's quite quiet in, you know, when you're going yeah, around the venue. Three days, don't you? First day, semi-final yeah. and final. I mean, most tournaments are like a marathon there. You know, 128 players, it's like a marathon. And I can't play too many marathons, so... This you can see the bit of the finish line before the tournament's even started, so you get a little bit excited. But it makes a difference coming to a venue, Jill. I think when the the the, the boys know they're coming in, they'll get a proper practice, and that you can schedule yeah, your, your yeah. day. Yeah, I mean, I'd like the one to eight draws now. I won't even enter the building until the like. If I get to the last sixteen, I'm just going to turn up like five minutes before my game play because it's just like <laughs> it's absolute chaos there. Honestly, it's just mental, mate. Honestly, honestly, it's unbelievable. It can but be actually. At least when you come here, you feel yeah. like appreciated. You feel like a little bit like you know, it's it's nice. It's like you know, it's a nice soft carpet. You know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> You know, I'm feels, sure you'd really appreciate nice. it everywhere you no, go, you, Ronnie. No, you feel motivated to play well, but when you go to like some of these other places, you, you just get there and you're like beat before you started, and you just think, God, it's so demotivating. But here, mm. you come here, you get excited, and if if you get excited, you tend to play all right, you know. I, I know what Ronnie means. Obviously, if, if you if you need a bit of inspiration to make you play, sometimes that you know I found them as well. And some of the mm. venues when you go to like, you know, I don't want to denigrate leisure centres, but they don't really have that atmosphere, do you? Walking past swimming pools oh, and, and all sorts of stuff, and awful. it doesn't really get, get you going and get you look forward to awful. playing. Honestly, it's so awful, you know, and <laughs> just straight away you're like, oh, I've just got to like grin and bear it. And by day three or four, you get so used to it because it's that bad that you end up not caring anyway. So you just, and it's not good really, you know, but like this tournament's great, good venue, and you get, you know, you get excited, you know. Mm. And we haven't seen you much this year, as you mentioned. You played a couple of tournaments, I know, I know, one just, one, and got to semi-final. I just can't either. bear it, honestly. Oh, the performance are that bad, honestly. <laughs> I just can't bear it, and I thought I'm not going to put myself through it. Like if, any, if someone offered me last season again now, I'd say no, you can keep it because it was just like dashing from one place to another, and I didn't enjoy it. You know, I got do, ground down. Do you think John should do the same? Because John yeah. seems to play in a lot of tournaments, and he says yeah. he's fallen out of love with the game. Do you yeah. think he should I do the same? I fell out of love with the game, and I won five tournaments and seven finals yeah. last year. Yeah. Now I feel it would improve John to do and that. And I'm loving the game now. And I, I said to John, you know, you just don't. Don't get sucked into these ranking points and all that, mm. you know. 
Yeah. So no, I think the tournament I'll... without me and John in it is a lot less anyway, so we should just forget about rankings, play. <laughs> and once we're not in them tournaments, you know, sponsors and TV might go, well, why aren't they in there? But I'm not chasing ranking points anymore. I'm just going to play for my fans, try and be in good, good, good form when I do play and um, forget about the rankings, have a different perspective on it and just play and just get ready for tournaments and enjoy getting ready for it because that's, that's titles, the buzz. Collect trophies, Well, it's hard, grabs. you know, it's, it's a real, it's, you know, it's all, all high risk, but as long as I stay on the tour, you know, it's a flat one to eight draw, so it doesn't really matter if you're in the top 16 apart from the Masters, Shanghai and the Worlds, but I'm not really bothered about that. I just like playing, I like competing, so I just have to compete on my own terms and obviously I'm going to miss out on a lot of events that on the one-year list, but I don't really care. I'd rather be happy and chilling and enjoying playing, you know. Although we'd quite like to see you playing in the, our series in the spring, which is on the one-year list. So yeah, well, I, probably, I probably won't make that unless I win one of the big tournaments like the UK and that, because obviously I haven't played. Well, there's so. every chance. Yeah, play well, like that, you'll have I, no win, I've got a chance, but there's a lot, a lot of very, very good players. You know, you are putting all your eggs in one basket. But I'm not. Listen, I'm not, I've, I've had to change my perspective and just think, well, what will be, will be. As long as I get to play some tournaments, I'm happy. You know. Be interesting to see if John Higgins might share that view, thinking about his future. But listen, uh, after his uh, defeat to you tonight, we've got some words from John Higgins now. John, that was a, a cracking match to watch. Just the odd mistake here and there made the difference. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was. It was. I'm a bit disappointed, but then I, I can't really be Ronnie. Ronnie just went up a level from a uh, three-two. I was three-two in front. Uh, I can just remember me potted a blue. I think that probably won him the game. I think it was three-all. He just took the blue into the green bag, screwed back, and I think he would have left the frame there. And me potting that blue, I think that he just went up a gear. He probably was seen seen the pox like buckets in, and uh, he ran out. Now a deserved winner. Yep. He made six centuries today. He seems to be in tip-top form. Yeah, he's, that's normally what he's like, Ronnie. Uh, yeah, I, I can't speak highly enough of him as a player. He's an unbelievable snooker player. Uh, and if you're just not on your game, and your safety as well has got to be so so tough, it's so tight against them as well, uh, you're not going to win. You're a born winner, an all-time great. To be involved in that kind of occasion, did that get the competitive juices flowing again? Yeah, of course it does. Now I was enjoying it. Uh, I, I, I done a decent break to, to level it 2-0, and then I've went went front 3-2, and I, I, I felt good. I felt good, but it, it, it just it just shut me out. And as I said, I had a couple of, couple of loose shots. I, I shouldn't have played a double. I can remember one of the frames, but you, you just want to try and make something happen because because he, he's at the table all the time. You're, you're trying to push it maybe a little bit, and and you can't afford to do that. Finally, though. Great positive these days. There's always another tournament around the yeah. corner and plenty to play for before Christmas. Yeah, of course. Now we've got Northern Ireland, uh, we'll be Belfast next week, and then you've got the UK Championship, obviously, and then the Scottish Open, which is a hometown event. So, yeah, now I'll, I'll get the chin up and just try and get some hard, pra hard practice in. I need it, and hopefully do well in the next few tournaments. Thanks, John. Great. Cheers, Paul. Yeah, a lot of respect between you two players. It's great to hear that. And he made mention of it there, six centuries. If it was any other player, we'd be you know, falling off our chair. Six centuries in a day. This fellow did seven, I think, one day. Mm. Uh, but 965 centuries. When's the big thousand coming? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Another 35 more centuries. I yeah. don't know. Uh, probably not this season. Sorry, get 999 and deliberately miss all the time. Nine, <laughs> nine, nine, nine. Keep, keep waiting. Yeah. Wait till you get to the crucible and do it later. <laughs> Just keep twitching up deliberately. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Well, listen, uh, you've got Sean Murphy on Friday night, a rematch from last year's final. What are your thoughts on that one? Um, yeah, no, Sean's a fantastic player. You know, he's had a bit of a, a ropey season by his own standards, you know, like hasn't been able to get out of the qualifiers and most of the tournament. So, you know, he's due to sort of um, turn a corner. So, you know, played some good snook yesterday, tough match. You know, especially on this table, if he gets going, mate, he's going to be hard to stop. So I've got to play well. OK, listen, thanks for joining us tonight. Well done on that win. After the break, we'll be pre